Hey, Space fans. Tarek Malik, Editor-in-Chief of Space.com, coming at you from a very special place. Uh, I am with Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson in his awesome office here uh, at the uh, the uh, Rose uh, uh, Planetarium. The, well, is that it's right? the, still the Hayden Planetarium. It's the Hayden Planetarium. As part of the Rose Center for Earth and Space. Uh, this is what happens when you nest donations. <laughs> 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 you keep the planetarium, but someone gave in even more money. And uh, well, well, so here at the Hayden Planetarium, Rose Center for Earth and Space, American Museum of Natural History, New York City. That's right. Also, space.com's home. So, uh, uh, Neil, thank you for, for having time with us. Excellent, excellent. Uh, but uh, but you have a, a, an amazing new show out, Cosmos Possible Worlds. Uh, yeah. National yeah. National uh, Geographic Channel and Fox mm -hmm. uh, coming out, and it's been a while since the last Cosmos. Uh, well, with so well, Space Time Odyssey. Yeah, just in context, the first Cosmos was 40 years ago. That's right. Hosted by Carl Sagan. And then it was, I think, imagined as a one-off. But then as time went on, it was like, maybe this should happen again. And Drian, Carl Sagan's widow, was thinking this. And uh, she co-wrote the original. And she's co-written the one from 2014 and the current one. So that first gap was 34 years. And then this most recent one, that other one was six years ago. So I don't, you know, it's a lot to do <laughs> to put in there. I, I don't know if we can bang these out annually, because the word season implies that. Yes. And I don't, I don't see that as a, this, it's just given the work that Anne puts into it, she's the secret sauce mm -hmm. of all of these, right? I can bring scientific expertise as can others, but. That alone does not make a cosmos. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you about because when Space Time Odyssey came out, mm -hmm. it was it was a like, it, as you mentioned, it had been thirty four years. Mm -hmm. uh, many new discoveries in space uh, and science had come out, and it was a very kind of like a touch point to check back at where have we, how where are we now, um, and and looking back even at twenty fourteen, it seems like we've already made so many m new discoveries, and and it, you know with we're, we're at the time that we're talking, uh, coronavirus is a big subject. Uh, the science of elbow bump. of uh, elbow yeah. bump. <laughs> the science of of tracking that and and what it means for the average non scientist uh, is is a critical issue and and I'm I'm just wondering, do you see kind of that a similar moment even though it's only been a few more years, uh, in in terms of what science uh, means to people on a daily basis? That's a perfect question. That's why you're editor in chief. <laughs> yeah. I'm honored that we pull out the big guns for me here. That's an excellent question. So, um, what you in that question you recognized implicitly that Cosmos is not simply about conveying latest discoveries. If it were, then it would be just another documentary. And when you're watching Cosmos, at no time do you feel I'm watching a documentary and I have to sit down and learn from it. You're never feeling that. There's another kind of relationship established between what's coming over the screen and the viewer. And that relationship comes about because Anne Druyan, who is not a scientist herself, but she's hyper-scientifically literate. She's also historically literate, and perhaps most importantly, she's emotionally literate. So when it comes time to telling these stories of scientists drawn from the past, who have, who, where there's a lesson to be learned from their struggles, trying to get objective truths out there in the face of forces that would not have it. Uh, usually dogmatic influences of politics, of culture, of religion, of, of attitudes, of, of just bias. All of these things can thwart the progress of our understanding of the universe. And Cosmos gets in there, tells those stories. And you come away feeling, whoa, I'm not only enlightened, I'm, I feel empowered to try to take this new understanding of the world, not only of the science, but of the interaction of science and culture, and say, I'm gonna create a world, the subtitle is Possible Worlds in this, in this round. I wanna create a world. Possible Worlds is not just exoplanets. Mm -hmm. Sure, we, we, we throw those in too. Here's a good one, here's a bad one, here's one we might move to one day. But there are also paths in front of us on Earth. What kind of Earth do you want for the future? That's a possible world. And if you take this path, which could be a path of inaction or a path of wrong action, that's a world, I don't know that that's what you want to bequeath to, yeah. your, to your descendants. And so Cosmos Possible Worlds explores 
ways that we can exploit the power that we have and our knowledge and turn that into wisdom so that we can create an earth that our descendants would be proud that we had set up for them rather than embarrassed by what it is we did to them. You know, I wanted to follow up on that because when I grew up uh, with the original Cosmos, it was like a very kind of emotional lens. I love space all the time, so anything that had the word Cosmos or space would grab me. Uh, but uh, my daughter, she's 11 now, and her first uh, exposure to Cosmos was Space Time Odyssey. They watched it during uh, uh, recess at school. Oh, actually. wow. Yeah. Okay. And, and so I, uh, I was curious. But instead of recess. Instead of recess. <laughs> that was recess. No. Uh, and, I don't know. You know, I, I, I'm all in for Cosmos, but I, I might be more in for recess. <laughs> so, I'm well, thinking. I'll remind her. I'll remind her. They watched the entire, the entire run last, uh, last year, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I'm, I'm wondering how you see possible worlds building on that for that new generation of, of science-minded uh, children. Excellent. That's recent enough so that these two will occur within the, the, the educational arc of many people who will be watching it. And uh, space, uh, the original one, well, so my first of the two I've been in, uh, Cosmos, A Space Time Odyssey, um, I think we had to remind people that Cosmos was a thing mm -hmm. and that it uh, remind people of some of the vocabulary, the tools of education that were invoked. I don't mean literal vocabulary, I mean um, a, a visual vocabulary. One of them is the, of course, the ship of the imagination, where it can move through time and space and assume different sizes. And I'm at the helm of that ship. But here's the level at which thought planning even occurred for this. You ready? So in the 2014, my outfit is designed. And I say, well, shouldn't I have like chevrons or some, <laughs> you know, Starfleet Command little logo? And Ann Julian said, no, nothing. And I said, well, why? And she said, well, because that puts distance between you and the audience. I went to Cat Starfleet Academy and you didn't. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you obey what I say. And she, like I said, she emotes the universe. It was, yes, that makes complete sense. I'm not here to be in front of you. I'm here to be be next to you, and we're going to go on this journey together. So one of the taglines is, I'll do it in my Cosmos voice, <laughs> come with me. Come with me. And wherever we go, we're on it together. And that's the sort of fireside manner that Carl Sagan, I think, I don't, let's say he pioneered it. I don't know scientists before him who, who where you felt that when, when they spoke. And that was easy for me to access because I, I think I have a lot of that already in me. But that approach to science, which in 2014, we did it. There was messaging there as well. Uh, we just continue that now, six years later. So for, for the, it is, it is the 40th anniversary of that original yes. run. I mean, is there anything special you're hoping people will take away uh, from that? I mean, it's, yeah, the first episode yeah. starts with Carl's voice, so. Anything special? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one special thing you take it. Yes, it begins with, he's got a great voice and uh, I could I help if we. <laughs> I don't know if it's allowed to completely recreate someone's voice for a new script who's <laughs> who's deceased, but I would have the whole thing in his voice if I could. Um, so, but yeah, it's a, it's an important sort of, a threading of continuity, just so you, it reminds you, of how that began, and then there's a passing of a short of a torch. So, for example, if, if we do Cosmos again, and I think Anne might have another one in her, um, it's, I, I have no hesitation. Someone else, you know, Rob, give me a tor pass the torch to someone else. I mean, I interact with students in this office mm -hmm. the way Carl Sagan interacted with me when I first visited him when I was in high school. And it's because of how he treated me with dignity and respect. He didn't know me from anything. He just knew that I had a passion and an interest that aligned with his. So why not promote that and send it forward? Great. Well, I, I do have to ask one question because Cosmos was delayed for a year. But I, 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 do, I do feel that I just need to at least ask mm -hmm. uh, about if, 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 you're, if, you're, if there's any concern about um, uh, that whole backdrop infecting the, the public's embracing of the show or, or, or anything of that sort. So. Yeah, I, I can't know that for sure. But um, I do monitor my social media, and 
uh, people, as best as I can read in the, in the threads, uh, people are eager for this to finally hit the airwaves. And, um, you know, it's, it, no matter what I post, someone says, when's Cosmos coming? Where's Cosmos? <laughs> it's like, like people almost getting angry. <laughs> and that's a, I think that's a good sign mm -hmm. that the anticipation is real and it's there. And plus they'll get it twice. There's National Geographic airing and then Fox will take it on over the summer. Then I think it may stream in the fall, so it'll be it'll have a presence all year. Yeah, now there's more avenues now than there were. Yeah, there's more avenues. That complicates it, but it also broadens access. Okay. So uh, we'll see how that uh, how that ultimately settles. So um, I, my read of the tea leaves is that people are eager, and um, in some ways, 2020 may have been a better year actually to drop the show, drop it to, yeah. <laughs> to drop means. Post yes. uh, to post the show, um, just because first it's a round number. We all like round numbers. That's right. 2020. That's a rounder number than 2019. But of course, it's an election year. People want to feel empowered. People, um, we have a closer relationship to policy and government and and issues in an election year than we otherwise would. And Cosmos heightens people's awareness and sensitivity to those to why being scientifically matters, but to why being scientifically literate matters if you actually want to claim you have some control of the future mm -hmm. of your society and civilization at large. Because if you don't, then just move back to the cave because <sighs> that's where you're going anyway. Well, Dr. Nuthergrass Tyson, thank you so much Excellent. for the time thank that we you. have today. Thank you for tuning in. And wait, wait, that's a blueprint. That's right. Apollo blueprint. That's Apollo 11. I, I know. How many, that's because it's a little mysterious <laughs> sitting there. It looks like a some kind of trilobite or something. Yeah, uh, uh, Buzz Aldrin's. Uh, is it his left foot? His right now, foot. How do you know that's his foot and not some? <laughs> no, no, just not. not it's <laughs> the picture. It's just the photo. But, but thank you for your time today. Okay, we excellent. look forward to Cosmos Possible Worlds and thank you. maybe more possible Cosmos in the future. Yes. Um, and, uh, and all the best. Keep uh, thanks for coming to my office. Thank you. We'll do another elbow bump. Okay, here you go. Thank you so much.